In most cases, you start off a CAD project by using a preset rig and editing it as seen in the previous movie. In some cases, however, you may find it easier to build a CAD rig from scratch when your character or creature is somewhat out of the ordinary. In this case, you have a quadruped creature that looks like a cross between a dog, a wolf, maybe a bit of hyena. The creature on the left is already rigged and animated with a walk cycle. You will create a manual rig to the creature on the right to learn about the process of creating new original rigs. Select the animated beast and hide it. Select the creature you will work on and press Alt-X to enable X-ray mode on the mesh. Next, freeze the mesh so it doesn't impede your work as you build the skeleton. To create a rig, go to the Helpers panel and select the Cat Objects list. Click the Cat Parent button. Make sure the Cat Rig preset reads None and click and drag under the Beast Mesh. This creates a node for a rig but no bone elements yet. Rename the Cat Rig MyBeast underscore. This will be the prefix for all the limb names you are about to create. Center the node to 000. This is where the mesh is positioned. With the node selected, go to the Modify panel. The first thing you need to create is a pelvis. This acts like a center of mass for any creature. Click the Create Pelvis button. On some systems, you may experience some refresh problems. If the pelvis does not automatically appear in the viewport, you may need to refresh it by panning or simply by pressing the tilde key. Keep that in mind any time you create a hub or a bone. A simple refresh will ensure the object is visible in the viewport. Now you can select the pelvis and move it into place. Rename the object Pelvis, which is better than the generic Hub001. To view the main name update with the MyBeast underscore prefix, simply deselect and reselect the object. Before you start editing its parameters, it is very important to rotate the pelvis as the spine on this character is mostly horizontal. Failure to do that will result in the character snapping to an upright position if you apply a motion file to it later. After that, you can adjust the length, width, and height parameters. With the pelvis selected, click the Add Leg button. A leg gets created. At this time, it is a human leg with a thigh, a calf, and a foot, but the creature you are working on has an extra joint. Select the thigh and in the Modify panel, specify that this leg has actually three bones instead of two. Next, move and rotate the foot platform into position. Select the thigh again and move it and rotate it so that it follows the anatomy. Do the same with the knee and the hock joint as well. Adjust the foot angle as it seems a little high. Keep on making transform adjustments until you are satisfied. Select the bones one at a time, from top to bottom, and adjust parameters such as width and depth. This will help with the skinning later. Once you've adjusted the foot, set its number of digits to 3. Adjust the toe bones based on the geometry. This takes care of the first leg. Select the pelvis again and choose Add Leg one more time. Notice that all the work you've done so far is preserved and transposed to the other side. Still, always look for possible errors. The geometry was not modeled perfectly symmetrical, so you may need a few adjustments on the right leg. Next, you create a spine. Select the pelvis and click the Add Spine button. Select the uppermost bone on the spine and rename it Torso. 
Move it closer to the shoulder area. Notice how the spine is automatically stretched to accommodate that shift. Rotate the torso bone so that it follows the natural contours of the character. Adjust its parameters to help with the skinning later. Similarly, select the individual spine bones and adjust their parameters. If you wish, double click the base spine bone to select the whole chain and then change the wire color. At this time, you create the front legs much the same way you did the rear legs by selecting the torso hub and choosing Add Leg. In addition to specifying a three bone leg as you did earlier, you may want to enable the collarbone option. The collarbone will act like an inner bone in this case and will also help with the skinning. Adjust the front leg using transforms and editing parametric values like you did earlier with the back leg. Once done, select the torso hub again and add another leg on the other side. That still leaves you with a neck and a head to add. With the torso hub selected, add another spine. This is essentially what a neck is. Select the top bone and rename it Head. Select any neck bone and rename it Neck to differentiate this spine from the back spine. Adjust the head position and the position of the neck bones based on the existing geometry. Adjust the parameters of the head and the parameters of the individual neck bones. At this time, most of the skeleton is in place, but there are some areas that are out of the skeleton's range if you apply a skin modifier. Those out of range areas can still be controlled by the nearest bone but will prove difficult to animate separately should you decide to do so. These include the character's jaw and snout, mane, and tail. In order to accommodate those areas, you need to add more individual bones. The tail is easy enough to create. This is done by selecting the pelvis hub, switching to wireframe mode, F3, and clicking Add Tail. Notice the tail inside the skeleton. Select the tail base and rotate it in the correct direction. Set the number of links. In this case, three should be enough. Adjust the position, orientation, and parameters of the individual bones. The mouth and the mane are slightly more complex and require more manual insertion of bones. Start with the mouth area. Zoom in on that area and select the head. Make sure you are in wireframe mode. Click on Add Bone. A bone should appear at the center of the head. A word of warning, if a bone doesn't appear, you simply need to refresh the screen by pressing tilde. Sometimes, the wire colors are difficult to read too. Do not keep pressing the Add Bone button indefinitely, otherwise you'll be adding bones that you do not need. This is the same phenomenon that happens sometimes when you add a pelvis. Select the newly created bone and move it outside the head, near the lower jaw. You can even rename it as such if you wish. Go back to Shaded Mode, F3, and adjust the bone to fit the character. Repeat this procedure to create an upper jaw.
You can create main bones much the same way by selecting an appropriate bone and adding more bones to it. Even the underbelly area could use a few more bones to help with the skinning process. Once you have all the bones in place and adjusted, it is time for a skin test. Notice in passing that you can save a CAT rig to disk if you wish to use it as a preset at a later time. You'd then be able to recreate it with a simple click and adjust its size using the CAT units ratio. Delete any extra rigs to go back to the one you are working on. Unfreeze all objects and disable X-ray mode Alt-X on the mesh. With the mesh selected, apply a skin modifier. Choose Add Bones and in the dialog that appears, click once on the My Beast pelvis entry. Press Ctrl C to select all the children bones and then click the Select button. Select any bone on the skeleton and go to the Motion panel. In the Layer Manager rollout, click the Layer Flyout and choose the last option. This creates a cat motion layer. Enable Animation Mode and test the animation. Chances are you will need some adjustment to the bone and to the skin modifier. In that case, you simply toggle off the animation button to go back to setup mode. If you haven't adjusted your animation yet, you can even delete the layer altogether. It is easy enough to recreate it after you have fixed the problem areas. The next movie, you start looking more thoroughly into animation layers.